Right, I tell you there, champs, and yes, it is Techtober, and Apple are going to be releasing a whole slew of new products. We're going to talk about the MacBook Pro 16, the next one. We'll also talk about the new MacBook and the MacBook Pro 13, what to expect. They're definitely coming this year, well, at least according to the rumors, and I'm going to give you a long-term review of my MacBook Pro 16, and I'm going to tell you why the 5600 graphics version of the MacBook Pro 16 is just killer. I mean, this thing is amazing, and what a workhorse, and why it's better than the 5500 version and i've had both if you don't know what i'm talking about i'm talking about the graphics yes the 5600m radeon pro graphics in the macbook pro 16 that version is like so good now look at these awesome renders how gorgeous are they my man apple tomorrow go check him out on twitter i'll leave a link in the description that's where i got all these renders from and they are beautiful thanks to him to actually let me use these renders from what i can tell he's actually using blender so yeah but if you have a look they're probably based on this painting these renders so they will be accurate and if you have a look at this painting this is for a new macbook well the xps 15 looks exactly like that so if you want to know what the new macbook pro 16 is going to look like have a look at this whoa yes it's not going to be white of course but that's how it's going to look it's going to have the same sort of size trackpad the same sort of speaker arrangement the same all screen display but of course it'll be space gray so something to look forward to now first let's talk about the macbook and the macbook pro 13 which are rumored to come out this year so they should be announced maybe in this next event i doubt apple are going to do another event again this will probably be the last event unless they release them by press release which is possible so depending on the rumors you listen to and there have been so many rumors but what it looks like is a 12 inch arm macbook starting at 899 and a 13 inch arm macbook pro 13 starting at 1099 so this is much cheaper than they were before obviously they don't have to pay intel three four hundred dollars for their cpu anymore and basically the r d and the cost of making these chips is going to be so small compared to what they were paying intel they can do a couple of things apple they can just make a better laptop with more stuff in it like face id or give you more storage or they can reduce the prices and that 12 inch arm macbook looks like it's aimed at education at 900 dollars it might even be 700 dollars they can do that but knowing apple they'll probably make a better laptop and then keep the margins higher who knows we'll find out but some people have actually said there will be two versions of the macbook pro 13 they'll have the intel and the arm version I assume the Intel version will be 11th generation. I don't know why they'll update it so soon from the 10th generation one. Sort of doesn't make sense. But some professionals that maybe use Pro Tools or Baselight or something like that, or even Media Composer, they're not going to buy the Apple Silicon one. I guess people in the Apple ecosystem of Final Cut and maybe the Adobe suite. Maybe the Apple Silicon one works out better. But it's going to be interesting to see if that happens. With the Apple Silicon, they're rumored up to 12 cores, going to have beefier GPUs. It's going to be the best Apple Silicon chip you have seen so far. It's going to be the most powerful. If it's got 12 cores like that rumor, it's going to be a beast so of course they'd be thinner lighter battery life who knows check out these rumors a lot of people think it's just going to be 20 hours battery life that's not going to happen they're going to probably make it thinner and lighter so less battery so it'll probably work out about the same maybe a little bit of battery boost but remember the display uses most of the battery anyway so let's talk about the next macbook pro 16 and there has to be a new one right now they did update the graphics card this year with this macbook pro 16 and by the way this display here it's awesome i made a video just having a look at this display just one cable connect to your macbook awesome great second display for an imac charges your laptop i'll leave a link to that video in the description i'm loving that but there's going to be no apple silicon macbook pro 16 this year it'll probably come out next year there's going to be no mini led this year probably next year but there has to be something released in between right maybe november this year or maybe even early next year with intel 11th generation cpus and amd's new rdna2 gpus and you're probably thinking well why intel because i think they're going to offer that alongside apple silicon as well but if there's a new macbook pro 16 this year what's going to go in it going to be the same design everything's going to be absolutely the same they'll put intel 10th generation cpus in it and why haven't they done it already because there's supply issues with the i9s and everybody buys the i9 on the macbook pros and i've only started to see laptops with it now i've already reviewed laptops with that there's stuff all difference between the 10th and the 9th generation so maybe apple think well what's the point but i would say it's more along the lines of supply issue i've actually only seen laptops with i9 sort of only pop up within the last 
last few weeks, so maybe the supply issue is better now. Will they be waiting for RDNA 2 in November or the end of October when AMD announced their new GPUs? I think that will be a strange one because usually the mobile GPU comes some months after the main desktop ones come out, so it will be unusual for AMD to have the mobile GPUs alongside with the desktops at the same time. But never say never, right? Apple are a special customer maybe they can get their RDNA GPU sooner. And then there's maybe Wi-Fi 6. I wouldn't hold your breath for Wi-Fi 6. I mean, they had 10th generation CPUs in MacBook Pro 13s and yeah, they still haven't put Wi-Fi 6. So at the end of the day, if a new MacBook Pro 16 comes out this year, it's going to have Intel 11th generation CPUs, possibility of new RDNA 2 graphics from AMD and maybe Wi-Fi 6. Other than that, Everything else should be the same. If one comes out early next year, you're going to get 11th generation CPUs, which they have PCI Express 4, Thunderbolt 4, new architecture. I'd actually really like to see that because that should be a good CPU. And then RDNA graphics for sure should be out by then, early next year. And then, of course, eventually a new redesign and Apple Silicon with mini LED HDR display. But I don't think that will be coming out until probably the end of next year, mid next year. I think it's too much to hope for within the next six months. So what about this MacBook Pro 16 I've had here? What's my long-term review of it? Oh my God, it's such a great device. And remember the MacBook Pro 15, 2015 model? Everybody said, that's the GOAT, that's the GOAT. Well, I'm telling you now, this is the GOAT especially with this 5600M graphics, that is the best GPU in the laptop. Now listen to what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's the fastest GPU. There are faster GPUs, but it is the best. What for what, the performance you get out of this GPU in this MacBook Pro 16 5600M is just amazing. It beats what for what an RTX 2060 and even keeps up with an RTX 2070 and actually beat it in Luxmark at 50 sort of watts. 8 gigabytes of HBM memory, it is just a beast. Now, I never had a problem with the model with the 5500 graphics. I did have the 8 gigabyte version of that as well. That thing was amazing. That done everything I threw at it, 6K, 4K, HDR, everything. But there is a difference between the two. The 5600M is obviously more powerful. It's quite a lot more powerful. But the bonus of the 5600M is... Your CPU goes harder because they've rearranged the cooling system. Their fans actually go faster, but it's actually a quieter system. So that's a bit strange. But obviously there's a retooling of the heatsink there. And I can get like 3,600 Cinebench. Now you won't get that sort of Cinebench score with the 5,500 graphics or the 5,300 graphics. So I don't know why I think it's just the cooling. But the 5,600, I've had a couple of them and both of them score over 3,500 in Cinebench. So obviously there is a bit better cooling in the 5600 model also it's quieter even though the fans go faster the fans come on less often i connect it to an external monitor compared to the 5500 where the fans would be on pretty much all the time the 5600 is quiet most of the time connected to an external monitor when you fire up say premiere pro or final cut or something the fans will come on then they'll go off again Whereas the 5500, pretty much the whole time connected to an external monitor, the fans were on all the time. Now, when I actually edit video, the 5500 used to scream a bit just for editing 6K footage. Now, the 5600M model I have now, I don't really hear the fans when I video edit. The only time is when I add the LUT and then I add the color grade on top of that. Then I hear the fans. Whereas with the 5500 model, the fans were on all the time. And even sometimes when I'm actually rendering with the 5600M model, it's very quiet. Compared to the 5500, that's most of the time screaming its guts out. So you get the better performance. It's quieter. I have noticed in Final Cut, it is a bit louder. Like, I don't know why Final Cut, just the way it uses the GPU or something, it just, it is louder for some reason. But anyway, I've got to say, this thing is an amazing workhorse. It does what you want it to do. It's one of the best laptops, without a doubt. And I think it's the GOAT in terms of, you know, MacBook Pros now. This MacBook Pro 16, you'll never see them on sale. They're hardly ever on sale because no one wants to sell them because they're so good. And it is better than the 15. It's just an amazing laptop. So anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.